Hi, welcome to the Idea to Launch show. My name is Lisa Zufall, and I am excited about season two. Idea to Launch is the, a show about mompreneurs who are building their empire while still getting to soccer practice on time. As a mompreneur myself, I find it fascinating comparing notes with other mompreneurs, whether on health, family, business, or just some good old fun. So today we're going to get started with Kim Jeline. She is amazing, and I'm so happy to have her on the show with us. Kim Jeline is the founder of Finding Your Fiji. It is a feng shui expert and psychic. Kim is a certified feng shui practitioner, IFSG Red Ribbon practitioner. We'll find out more about that. And certified angel card reader. Angels and homes talk to her, and they always have helpful information to share. In 2017, Kim moved from Minnesota to Maui, sight unseen to make her dream of dream life a reality. Through her private coaching, feng shui con consultations, and angel readings, Kim brings harmony to your head, heart, and home. I love that. She is passionate about helping you find your Fiji, whatever that may be for you. So welcome, Kim. I'm so glad you could join me today. I'm super excited about this conversation. Me too. So before we even get started, we have to do a weather check because it's snowing here. And so I just, oh, oh my gosh. I want to be part of your world for just the 30 minutes that we're together. So what's the weather like over there? Yeah, so it's gorgeous. It's 81 degrees um, mm. this morning. I um, It's typically a little bit cooler in the winter, so yep. more like mid 80s instead of like 90s. Yeah. So it's oh, actually just perfect. perfect. I actually enjoy the winter more than the <laughs> summer even sometimes. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. So we're going to get to your move from Minnesota to Maui. But before we started, how did you even get into this feng shui stuff and angel card readings? And how did you tap yeah. into all that? I know it's pretty fascinating. So the feng shui, I feel like I've instinctively been doing that since I was young, just because I always felt the energy in spaces. But yeah. what really led to led me to actually feng shui itself is when my husband and I years ago moved into a new house uh, in Cottage Grove. We built this house, um, really were excited about it, and things just were not going as well. Like we had plenty of money coming in, but it was going mm -hmm. at just as fast or if not faster out the back door. I get that. Um, yeah, right? <laughs> like, yeah. We've talked about and that. We've talked about that, haven't we? And also just relationship wise, things weren't going as well. There just were a lot of mm. things. And so I was at the library and I literally, you know, I feel like I was led to a book. I like to say, you know, people would say maybe you stumbled across the book, but yep. I feel like I was led to it. A book on feng shui. And I started, it was, I believe, um, change your life or move your stuff, change your life, which okay. I, I think I still have that copy of the book. <laughs> and it was a, um, just a, a life shifter for me. So I started reading the book. I started making changes and dang, if it didn't work and it worked fast, wow. like things shifted very fast. And so I was like a big fan after that. I studied on my own for a long time. So that was probably, let's see, we moved in that house in 1998. So that was maybe like 1999. Wow. Um, and then just studied on my own for quite a number of years. And then finally got the certification in 2014. I didn't even know you could get certified. How did you find out how yeah. to get certified? Um, yeah, that's a, there's a number of different schools and actually the International Feng Shui Guild, the IFSG, um, has okay. a lot of information about that so if people are interested in that that's can... what the ifsg red ribbon yes, practitioner is international Got it. feng shui guild and i'm actually on the board there now i'm uh the membership director for the ifsg but the there's certifications all over the country like you can get certified and there's all types of different feng shui as well okay the type that i got certified in is considered more of the western version which is i feel like easier for us to apply on our homes in the u.s and the west Western world okay. because of the way things are set up. And I was certified through Wind and Water School of Feng Shui, which is actually in the Twin Cities. And it's a long process. Mm -hmm. Like my course was, it was a 10 month certification and it was over 99 hours of training. Wow. So there is a lot more to Feng Shui than, than people realize. It's, it's not, not just, just about the red stuff. water cup or... <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> or the red purse. We had a discussion about a red purse the other day. 
We did. And I'm actually wearing red today, which I think is really funny. <laughs> I have my red water cup. So awesome. why feng shui? I know it's big. I, I mean, um, I'm part Korean. So my mom, I don't know. She's never called it anything, but just the way that she arranges things and how she does things. You know, it's very similar to what I've learned from you about feng shui. So yeah. I think that's really interesting. So what are some of the things... I know clutter is a big one for feng shui, right? Stuck yeah. energy and all that stuff. Yeah, and just to kind of let people know, like, what is feng shui, first of all, there's, um, to me and why it's important, they, we actually have three types of luck. So um, we consider our heaven luck, like when we were born, astrology, mm -hmm. like how the stars were aligned when we came onto the earth, right? Yep. I also believe that is part of our connection to divine, source, God, whatever you want to call that. Yeah. I feel like that's also part part of our heaven luck. And then we have earth luck, which is our environment and mm. feng shui assists with helping create an environment that energetically supports you and the things that you want to do, be and have in your life. Wow. So that's the second part of luck. The third part is your human luck. And that's the actions that we take the yep. things that we actually physically do. So since it's one third of our luck, I think it's pretty dang important, right? Oh, that's awesome. So let's talk about the red ribbon thing. And the reason why I want to talk about the, or the, I don't know, when we first met, you had these, I want to call them ribbons, and they had some weird coin on them. Oh, yeah. Or a bell. What, what, that's part of feng shui, is it not? Yes, it is. And actually, the red is significant because it is considered a lucky color or an auspicious color. So okay. that's why we use red a lot in feng shui. And the, um, the ribbon, we typically use the ribbon for representing that red color mm -hmm. as well as a length. So when I, for instance, would hang a bell on uh, uh, the door to my office, for example, to help bring in clients, I would hang that with a nine inch red ribbon. And the nine is significant also in feng shui. We do a lot of things in nine. And as, as you know, with yeah. the, uh, the treasure box that we're doing is a multiple of nine, that's 20, 27 days. Yep. And it is significant because it is the last number before they repeat again. Mm -hmm. It is about reaching new heights mm -hmm. and it's the number of success or completion. So it's really about like, this is done. It's, it's like setting the intention, like what I want, the intention of what I want is already done which in the spiritual world it is, right? Anything that we want has already been completed. We just need to open up to be re be able to receive that. That's amazing. Okay, so you, you've got this feng shui stuff. Am I pronouncing it correctly? Feng shui or um, feng shui? You're pretty close. It's feng, feng. Like, as if it were a you, feng shui. Feng shui, got it. Yeah, and it actually means wind and water. So feng shui I didn't know that. means wind and water. It's really about balance and about balancing uh, the energy in a space, but using the elements, the elements of nature to help balance the energy in spaces. So I, I didn't know that. So that's awesome. So how does that tie in with your readings? Yeah. So it's really fascinating to me how it, you know, when I first started putting this business together and I kept getting guidance about like, you're going to be doing this, you're going to be doing this. And I'm like, how does this all fit together? <laughs> uh, right. Right. Because it, it, on the surface, it doesn't seem like it does, but the angel readings are really that connection with the divine. So that's our really like our heaven luck and yeah. connecting with the divine, connecting with our higher wisdom, yeah. with our angels and guides helps us create the life that we want. And then the physical part, the feng shui, feng shui, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. yes. It brings it together. It. So you get your spiritual and your physical. Yes. And then I also work with the human aspect of things, the human luck, because I work um, with coaching. I work with a lot with mindset and living yep. beliefs and yep. things that, you know, like physically in your physical self are holding you back. You're like a powerhouse. <laughs> so how I'd did like you to think so? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So how did you know you had the gift of reading? I mean, because when we oh, yeah. when we do stuff and so I'm part of her treasure box and you guys will learn more about this 
um, a little bit later. But you do these readings and or you, you know, talk about you're being led to do this or spirit is guiding you. What does all that mean to somebody who's new to that stuff? Yes. Yeah. So I, you know, when I was little, I have a distinct memory of seeing angels on the altar and talking to angels and having a really strong wow. connection with them. But then as you know, time, time goes on, people don't believe you like, because they don't see them. They don't, they don't believe you. And so I really kind of, you know, stopped, stopped seeing them. Mm. I stopped, I never stopped connecting with them really. I always had a really strong connection and my mom did too. My mom had angels all over her house. Like she had little angel fingerings everywhere. Mm. And so she had a really strong connection with angels as well. So I had that kind of throughout my life, but I really kind of reconnected with my spiritual team, what I like to call my spiritual team of Mm -hmm. angels and guides Um, back in, I believe it was about 2012 And I went actually to a Wayne Dyer event. He was um, interviewing Abraham. So if you're familiar with Abraham Hicks at all, um, Esther Hicks channels a non-physical collective called Abraham. Okay. So in any event, I was at an event, um, went, flew there for just basically overnight to California for this event. It was the only time that Dr. Wayne Dyer and Abraham were ever um, together on stage. And there's, I, I think it's actually on YouTube probably now, the the actual interview is, is out there. But I was at this event and super high vibe, super strong energy to the point where I could barely stay awake at the event. And, it, and then the next morning I woke up, my girlfriend was still sleeping. I woke up and I went out on the patio with my journal and just thinking I would journal and all of that. And literally like, all of a sudden I could hear my angels and guides like they were sitting right next to me, clear as a bell. What? Wow. It's just, you know, one of those things people talk about, like you have an event and that was an event for me. And they started telling me that I was also going to be channeling similar to um, Esther and all the stuff. And I'm sitting there sobbing and I'm like, no, find somebody else. Like I can't do this. (laughs) Right. Um, yeah. And so much as I tried to resist, I'm an Aries, so I'm kind of can be stubborn about things. Um, so I tried to resist, but they Mm. weren't having it. And, and because I, you know, I jokingly say that once they started talking to me, they haven't shut up since. <laughs> it's, you know, they didn't stop talking to me. They didn't stop, you know, nudging wow. me and urging me and telling me, you know, and guiding me, which right. is really a beautiful thing. Like when you can hear the guidance, like so nice and clear, right. it's amazing. Um, and then it's just a matter of like following, actually following the guidance, you know. So. How long did it take you to start following the guidance? You You know, it was not too, it was not too much longer when I, I would say it was probably a few weeks that I actually started doing some channeling. So I started out trying to write and they're like, it's too slow. You need a recorder. So, so they, I got a recorder and I started recording. I still have the, the, those original channeled messages. I've not done anything with them. I've not released them or anything like that, but, um, But yeah, so I kind of was just getting to know my team. And then um, after a while, it was just like I didn't need to actually do the channeling because I just felt connected all the time. So it wasn't like I had to like sit in a meditation to connect, although I still do do that for sure when I'm wanting specific guidance. And I do still meditate, obviously, because that helps me keep clearer. Right. Well, everybody is supposed to meditate, right? I'm, I'm, I'm working on that. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, it's good. You know, I still myself do better with guided meditations. Yeah. So, you know, rather than just sitting my butt down in a chair and, and trying to be open, I do better yeah. with guided stuff. Yeah. So that that's just, you know, what works for me. And yeah. I think if me you too. can find whatever works for you, sometimes it's maybe even just doing a walking meditation. And those are great, too. Oh, how do you do those? You just basically, you go for a walk in nature, no like headphones or anything like that. And just basically be noticing everything around you, like Mm. noticing the nature. Um, You can even, as you're walking, be looking at a tree in the distance and just keep looking at that tree as you continue walking towards it and then picking a new spot as you go along. Wow. I didn't know that. I learned something from you all the time. 
But I just have to go back because I started giggling when you were telling about how you were resisting it and the yes. angels just kept coming at you and they didn't shut up. So the yep. image that I got was uh, from the movie Ghost. Remember Whoopi yes. Goldberg? Yes, I do. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, and so I started similar. giggling because I could imagine you going, come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so funny. Exactly. Now you have kids. I do. I have two boys. Um, they are back in Minnesota. One just turned 25. I can't even believe I have a 25 wow. year old. It's yeah. So crazy. And then my other son actually will be 22 in a week. Wow. So you started this journey. You had small kids. I, um, yeah, my kids, I guess when I started actually doing, you know, the channeling, the angel reading stuff, all of that kind of stuff, um, was really within the last 10 years. So yeah. they weren't super little, they right. were teenagers, you know, but, um, did they ever ask still, you for readings? You know, I try, it's so funny because I try, I remember trying once to do one for my younger son. Mm -hmm. Um, and I just couldn't, I was too close to it. I couldn't yeah. do it. And that was when I was newer at it. Yep. Um, so I haven't really, you know, I haven't really tried since they haven't asked. I've done, I've definitely done some stuff for like friends of theirs or different things like that. Right. Um, you know, yeah, it's an interesting thing, but sometimes when you're too close to it, it's kind of like trying to read for yourself at right. times right you know sometimes you don't get the clear answers right so raising these well they would be teenagers pre-teens right so raising yeah. them finding out that you have this gift and you know you start doing readings for people and stuff what was their reaction to it all you know, they're pretty, they're pretty relaxed and chill about it. Yeah. And in fact, um, my, my younger son in particular will be, he'll, he'll um, call me and he'll be like, yeah, can we talk? And I'm like, what do you want to talk about? And he <laughs> will say, you know, well, I've got this going on and I just want to get your perspective. Or he'll say, my friend has this going on and I know you know a lot more about this than I do. Can you mm. talk to her? Oh, you know, I love that. Um, yeah. So he's really and and of course, they're very they're probably pretty psychic themselves, too, although I don't know that they necessarily have fully tapped into the gift, but I'm guessing that they have that gift as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so they do, you know, they do get, get intuition, but they're pretty open about all of that stuff. And they're really, you know, they, they don't mind hearing me talk about it. It's actually pretty interesting. I for love them. that. Oh, that's awesome. And so they're still here in Minnesota. Are they jealous that yeah. you're in Maui or are they planning uh, to come live with you? <laughs> <laughs> well, Secretly, my intention <laughs> is that before they get married and have babies, that they will both move here. Yes. Um, so I'm just putting that out there to the universe. Uh, <laughs> my younger son has visited a couple times. He absolutely loves it here. Yeah. He really, you What's know, yeah, he just really enjoys it. My older son's coming in February for okay. a couple weeks. So, um, yeah, I, you know, definitely when winter comes, they definitely would rather probably be here. I think we'd all rather be there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But so what made, what made you decide, you know what, I'm moving to Maui? Yeah, that's such a, um, such a big story. I'm actually writing a book about I that. I know. Minnesota to Maui. Um, so really, I just kept getting signs. Oh, there goes my voice. Uh -oh. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm just going to take a little drink here. That's all right. Mm-hmm. I always pay attention when that happens, <clears throat> when your voice, like you get a little cloggy in your throat yep. chakra, Yep. right? Yep. It's a sign. It's a message like, ooh, this is something. And I, I share these stories a lot, but it's, yeah, it's an interesting, interesting thing. So something for me to process later, right, about all of that. But uh, yeah, I kept getting signs. So I kept getting like, I knew Minnesota wasn't my place. Like I just felt that the energy there felt a lot heavier for me. Yeah. And I don't love winter. So I knew for a long time that I wanted to move. And it right. just, you know, my boys were in school and different things like that. And it just wasn't, 
you know, it wasn't the time. Right. And then I just kept getting signs, uh, like within about probably six months before I moved, maybe eight months, I was getting um, just nudges about Maui. And finally, I was like, I it seemed pretty clear that I was meant to move here, even though I had never visited in my life, like never been to Maui. I've been to the Hawaiian Islands, Kauai and I Big didn't Island know that. And- yeah, in Oahu, never ever stepped foot on Maui before I moved here. Oh, wow. <laughs> right? So talk That's about That's awesome. <laughs> it's like super faith. And so I was like to my spiritual team, I'm like, okay, here's the deal. If yeah. I need if you know, if I'm really meant to move to Maui, I need a clear, like in your face right. sign. And so They did. They gave it to me. Like the very next day I get a package in the mail and it was from somebody I didn't know. I was part of a secret Santa sister sister exchange. And so it was a friend of a friend that sent it to me. No one at that time thought knew I was moving um, uh, or thinking about moving, let alone to Maui, other than like my BFF and my mentor, you know, had some inkling that this was on coming up for me. But Otherwise, no one knew. And so I get this package in the mail from a total stranger to this day, still don't know who sent it. And um, there were gifts in the bottom and they had cushioned them with some um, uh, little handle bags, like little shopping bags. The first bag I pulled out was aqua blue and said Maui Divers Jewelry on it. Wow. I know. I'm like, okay, I got my sign. I still have the bag because it's like, okay, wow. this is what got me here. I need to hang on to this, right? It's so mm-hmm. interesting because, you know, I call them coincidences. And, you know, spending time with you, I'm learning that there really aren't, there aren't coincidences, right? There is no such thing. I call them synchronicities. It's crazy. So, so yeah. you've just totally opened my eyes to that, especially when it came to the Treasure Box Club. And um, I, I think we need to take a few minutes and talk about the Treasure Box Club because now there is a wait list. Yes, there is a wait list. <laughs> yeah, I had, I definitely had people that couldn't. I did just 17 for the for the initial focus group because yep. this is the first time I've run it. So and much fun. So, yeah. Oh, my gosh. And I had no idea like this has a life of its own that I had no idea <laughs> was going to happen. Right. So I, yeah, the treasure box is a super powerful feng shui adjustment. So this is something that I've done before. I used to, when I was in Minnesota, make little kits okay. um, with the, all of the treasure box stuff. And then it was just a do it yourself thing. And the guidance that came in is that I was meant to do that again, but that I was meant to do it in a group format because when you do things in a group, it magnifies everything. Mm. And so it magnifies the results that people get. It made it make magnifies the energy of it. Um, so many good, good things happen with that. And it's a, it's a, a pretty lengthy process. It's 27 days. And some people are like, Oh dang, I can't do anything for 27 days. Like it, I can't it has even gone do the 21 so day fast. Right? So right? fast. It's gone so fast. We're already on day 20. It's crazy. <laughs> um, And it's helpful to have support along the way. So as you're going through it, to have the reminders, which I do the text reminders. Um, We have a face private Facebook group Mm -hmm. where we all share the magic that's happening. Even little tiny things like finding a parking spot. Like that is beautiful. And that is amazing. And it's about really learning to see all the abundance in our lives because we already have a lot of abundance and it's about attracting more. So yep. lots of feng shui tips, right? Yeah. Lots of good things. Um, I'd love to hear like what your favorite parts of it are. My, oh, well, my favorite part was before I even got the box, there were so many things happening, right? So I, so who is my, my um, archangel is Jophiel. Yes. And yeah. she is the organization lady. Yeah, she's our, she's actually our feng shui angel also, but yeah, she's, she helps with decluttering. (laughs) Before I even got the box, I was cleaning up the drawers in my um, bedroom. I was cleaning up my office. I was cleaning up my kitchen, you know, organized. I was just like an, on an organizing mission. It was crazy. I was just like, I have to get this done. (laughs) 
<laughs> yes. You know, and it's funny thing because the minute you sign up, the angels start working with you. So it's, yeah. this happens to me all the time. If people schedule a reading and yeah. then we'll get on the reading, they're like, well, I don't have that question anymore. Cause I kind of got that answered. Now I have these other questions. Right. So it, they immediately start working on you. And the same thing with the treasure box. So funny. Yeah. When I got it and I opened it up, there she was. And I'm like, are you kidding me? This is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> So much fun. But there were so many things that happened even before I got the box. I can't remember them all now, but between clients and just, I don't know, really nice gifts and just crazy stuff. But it was, but what I've learned more than anything through the the Treasure Box Club is it's not about, uh, you know, getting the check for $1 million dollars. It's about enjoying and being thankful for all the gifts because all day long we get gifts all day yes. long, right? And noticing all those gifts and being yes. thankful for all those gifts, um, whether it is a parking space or like this morning, my honey left me my case of Mountain Dew, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> I mean, that's better than flowers for me. And <laughs> uh, it's it's those kinds of things that you just look at and you're like, wow, that's just incredible. That's so thoughtful. That's so amazing. I am so thankful. Yes. And that is the coolest part of this all of all of it is just um, you helping me change the mindset around that. So it's not about the huge stuff. It's about enjoying all the little stuff. And it just compounds because you keep finding more and more things to be thankful for. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's really that snowball that, you know, as you start adding all the little things like you do when you're creating right. a snowball right. and you get that ball rolling, that's where the momentum comes and the bigger things can right. come in too. Oh, so much fun. The, um, yeah. A previous guest that I had on, a mutual friend of ours, Teresa Thomas, oh, was yeah. talking about her 50 fun things. And she did mention a little something that there might be a retreat in Maui. <laughs> yes, we're working on that. I know it's so funny. I keep, um, we originally were thinking early 2019, but it looks like it's going to be more fall okay. of 2019 is okay. what we're looking at. So right. yeah, it's a, and it, it's an interesting thing when you're spirit led too. So I really follow the guidance when I'm guided to do things. And yeah. I've got some legwork to do here on the island to check out some of the retreats places and that type of thing. Right. And I haven't been nudged to do that. So I'm like, <laughs> Like waiting for the the nudge to come in as to when that's going to happen. But yeah, that is an amazing process. The 50 fun things too. And, um, it just really, there's so, um, so many juicy things and the yes. retreat itself, actually, we're going to do a lot of, um, exploring the Island. Cause I'm not about like, you're in a beautiful place and you're going to be sitting in a room all day. Uh, -uh. Oh, no, <laughs> not yeah. happening. you're in, you're in Maui. You've got to go explore and yes. enjoy the ocean because the one thing before we go, the one thing that I learned about um, uh, the ocean is it's your own salt bath. And salt baths, yes. baths are good because... They clear your energy field. So your auric <laughs> field, we collect a lot of um, junk from other people, from yep. the co collective consciousness, all of that. And the salt, sea salt baths actually clear your energy field. So if you're ever feeling crappy, either emotionally or physically... Right get in a sea salt bath, mm -hmm. three cups, two or three cups of sea salt with three tablespoons of baking soda, soak for like 15, 20 minutes with your neck in the water. So slide in. And I had no idea about any of this stuff. So I hope this helped the audience learn a little bit yes. <laughs> yeah, on how awesome. to get that all together. The treasure box, there is a wait list, but if you are interested, it is so much fun. And it has been so powerful in just helping me change my mindset. I mean, there's been so many bonuses that have come along with that. I won't go into uh, a whole lot of detail, but there's been some super amazing fun things that have happened to me in the course of, what, 20 days, 20 plus, yeah. because we I was waiting for the box to come. But um, I just thank you for putting that together to listening to, you know, listening to those guides and, and pulling that all together because oh, this has so been welcome. so much fun. Um, so for Kim's free gift, she has a nine fast fe feng shui fixes to attract abundance, including a free color bagua. Did I say that right? You did. A mental yeah. map of your space. And I'm, I'm, I have my bagua chart sitting on my desk all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> and a home energy number calculator. What is that? 
So basically each home, you can calculate the energy of the space. Like what type, is it a knowledge home? Is it a career home? Is it a partnership home? And the free gift um, gives you the way to calculate that. So you'll figure, be able to figure that out. Okay. There is a URL here. I will actually, because instead of reading it off, I'll just put the URL in the um, description below. So you guys can click on that to grab your free gift. To sign up for the treasure box, the upcoming treasure box to get on the wait list, what do they need to do, Kim? Um, that I will give you a link for that as well. Awesome. And there anything? Is a, um, it is, the information is available on my website. So if they go to finding your Fiji, F-I-J-I.com. Yep. Um, there is under um, the feng shui tab, there is a treasure box page. So they can also awesome. find it there. Awesome. Oh, so much good stuff. Thank you so much for taking time to chat with us and being on the show. I appreciate you so much. And I thank you for everything that you've done. And uh, we'll have you back on again, I'm sure. Yeah, this was so much fun. <laughs> I feel like we could talk all day, right? We can talk all day. And I think there's been times where we, we have talked all day. <laughs> yes. So For thank sure. you, Kim, so much. For our listeners, if this resonated with you, if you enjoyed it, if you know a mompreneur that would just be re-energized by this show, please share it with them. Like, comment. Let us know what you think of this show and uh, subscribe. You can hit the button below and subscribe. We'd love to have you. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Bye.